Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be showing you how some of my breeding colonies are coming on with my feeder insects. Also what feeder insects are good to breed and will save you money and which ones I've had success with and not so much. So the first ones we start off with are the Morio worms. Now if you're in the UK you're wondering where I got this from, this is literally from Wilkinson's, I think it was like six pounds. The trays are actually quite good, the only reason they come out a little bit like that is because I drilled holes in the side and I drilled them one the wrong way basically there's a little thing that gets caught anyway anyway here are the Morio worms so the last time you probably saw my Morio worm breeding colony I had four or five beetles and unfortunately they didn't seem to breed and actually I only have two left so the environment couldn't have been ideal for them sadly um, I don't know if these two are breeding but I did have to order some more Morio worms. Now if you don't separate Morio worms, as we saw in the video, if you saw that video, I was exploring different ways of getting Morio worms to pupate. Because if you keep them in a group, they're not going to pupate, which is actually really handy for a feeder insect. That means they can last for a very long time in the state that they can be fed to your gecko. Um, however, I was not successful at breeding them and in some ways I'm not overly concerned because Morio worms aren't that expensive and they last for ages. They're also not the best food source so for me they're only given to my geckos as sort of a treat. It's part of a varied diet so almost every feed is a different insect so Morio worms you know they get offered every now and again. So in terms of actually breeding these it wasn't the biggest issue because they will last for ages. Next we have the darkling beetles, now these are the adults of mealworms and I'm not sure if I showed you me setting these up but most people they'll get mealworms like this one, this one never pupates, I don't know why, I'm not, I think it's alive, hello, it's slightly alive, okay, have some cucumber, there you go. So a lot of people will have mealworms and they will pupate and then they get all of these beetles and they're like what do I do do I release them the problem is mealworms can be quite destructive and so what I would say is actually to keep the beetles and just put them in um, a little setup now a lot of people do use oats the only problem with that is they can be high in phytic acid which isn't great for your gecko um, what I use here is earth mix arid because it's dry and the reason is I had some left over from doing the tanks. There are other things you can obviously use. But um, this also supports, this would support your cleanup crew. So of course it has properties that would support your mealworms and their beetles. So this is what I use and obviously I give them vegetable scraps. And at first I was thinking, they're not breeding. I can't see any mealworms. But in fact when you first look they're microscopic like they are so tiny and when I started to notice them I moved the beetles into the shallower one so let's go and see the baby mealworms so as you can see it's a little bit deeper actually it's a lot deeper and you probably from this angle cannot see them so let's quickly switch to our macro lens and now you can see them there's so many different sizes as well there's not just they're not all one size because obviously they were probably laid at a different time they came from all different beetles so the good thing with this is at the moment there looks like there's just hundreds of tiny ones but once they become like fully grown mealworms before they pupate we're going to kind of be overrun and the reason I think it's good to breed these is because when you get a pack of mealworms they do pupate really quickly you end up with loads of beetles you don't know what to do with them so it just makes more sense to keep the beetles breed them and not have to pay for mealworms ever again so and also that entire like life of the mealworm you can decide what they eat and you can make them the healthiest you like so I do just think this is beneficial for not only your wallet or your purse whatever it is um, but also the environment because you don't want to be releasing these into the wild and also beneficial to your gecko so mealworms definitely try breeding them Next we're going to look at waxworms and waxworms are probably the ones that you will use the least like especially if you have one gecko you'll buy a tub of them you know the gecko can't have them often but when you go to give them like a second feed of waxworms you'll find they've pupated and it's really annoying. I do actually feed the pupas to my geckos now because I don't want to waste anything um, but waxworms are a pain, you just do not have them long enough. Now I have bred them in the past when I was a lot younger. I actually, I don't know if it's still a common practice but it was like a jar set up with oats and honey and parchment paper I think and like maybe cardboard and I 
actually it was successful. They did breed, but the thing is the babies were so small they all escaped. And luckily that jar was in my garage, so not in my room. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't totally successful. I may try it again in the future. Obviously you get wax moss from here. You don't really want to be releasing them because they can be destructive to beehives. But um, wax worms are definitely one if you can maybe breed them because you'll be wasting a lot of money every time they pupate. Before we move on to crickets, I did want to talk about two different types of other worms that you can use with your gecko, but one of them I can't actually get over here. So the one I can't get over here is hornworms. I get asked about them a lot. Why don't you use them? Are they any good? I have heard they're good. Um, however, they are illegal over here, so I, I can't actually dry them. Um, Calci worms are also healthy worms that you can use. However, I did try to breed them. They turned into black soldier flies. Maybe my setup just wasn't good enough. I didn't get anything from it at all. So maybe if you have some tips on that, leave your comment below. Um, but yeah, that wasn't successful. But calci worms are definitely healthy worms that you can use with your leopard gecko. I get asked all the time whether I would breed crickets. And the answer is probably no, just because they smell so bad. Um, I have found though, if I use wood shavings, the smell does get absorbed a little bit. I stopped using them with my uh, mealworms and morio worms, but with the crickets, it seems to be totally fine. And it does take away some of that smell. But even now, they do smell bad. This chunk of carrot I put in last night and it's nearly almost gone. That's crazy. But yeah, you can definitely breed these if you want. And I do think the majority of my money probably does go on crickets and I do have to buy them every month. But I do have four leopard geckos to feed and a chihuahua who likes the occasional cricket. So, you know, they don't get wasted. But um, if you were to breed them, just be aware they will smell. Another animal I did try to breed, another feeder insect, was dubia roaches, and I have heard they're really good for leopard geckos. Unfortunately, at the time that I was breeding them, uh, my geckos were not interested, even Diego. Like, I'm pretty sure he ate them once and that was it. And I found that they smelled like wet dog. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just my dubia roaches or people who have dubia roaches just get used to the smell but it smelled horrendous and they needed a fairly big tub and it was just it was a mess so I stopped breeding them I actually sold them on um, and my geckos just weren't a fan but maybe in the future I may go back and try them again so I hope you have enjoyed this little video and catch up of the feeder insects Remember, you can follow me on a whole range of social medias now. I, I feel so old saying that, but uh, <laughs> I'm on a few things if you'd like to follow me. But uh, thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye. I think are good for breeding and saving you money. Um, before I begin, if you haven't already, pl I, I never do that. Why did I say that? <laughs> and welcome to today's video where I will be showing you how my brain co- I did a video of why are you wet? Welcome to today's video where I will show you a what? Oh my god. What is that smell? <laughs>